Hello and welcome back to White Hot Glory, the place where you can come to learn how to be white hot for God's glory in these end days. The Bible says you are hot or cold and you want to be white hot to show the Lord that you are so grateful and that you love him and that you thank him for his sacrifice. Um, we are always called to be growing and our Christian walk is a walk. It must continue forward at all times. So um, today we're going to address using the Lord's name in vain, saying, oh my God, or holy blank. And um, this is something that I was convicted on uh, very early on in my Christianity, uh, my born again status as a Christian. And I think I was in a, a van and we were, uh, multiple women and I were listening to a radio program where people send in questions and ask pastors what they think about certain things. And one of these segments included the addressing of saying, oh my God, as a Christian. And unless you are talking to God or about God, you, and you say Jesus Christ or oh Lord or oh my God, you're using his name in vain. It's the third commandment, and we'll go over that a little bit further. But as a new believer, I heard the pastor's answer. And right away, the Holy Spirit in me checked me and said, his answer is not correct. The pastor said something along the lines of, you know, you really shouldn't do that, but I, I think there are, are bigger issues to focus on. And I went, wait a second. I know that's one of the Ten Commandments. I mean, the Ten Commandments. Like, the whole world knows about the Ten Commandments and that you're supposed to follow them, right? And I just, I thought, if a pastor is saying that breaking one of the Ten Commandments is not a big deal, we are in big trouble as a church in America. I've, I've noticed a lot of compromise just little by little in our Christian radio stations. And um, you need to be mindful just because something is labeled Christian doesn't does not necessarily mean that it lines up with the Bible. So that's why you must be reading God's word all the time, because as a new believer, as as the Holy Spirit leads me and guides me and says, hey, no, 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 that's not right. Or go here. Um, it's a lot easier to know why, because I have the word of God hidden in my heart. So if the Holy Spirit says, hey, that's not right, I will know, oh, because that's not what the Ten Commandments say. And God himself gave us those Ten Commandments. So is it possible to, to live by them and keep them all the time? No, but we are called to do our very, very best out of love, respect, and reverence for the Lord. And our society today has a, a very sad lack of respect for the Lord, a lack of reverence. Uh, Exodus 20, verse 7, is the third commandment. It says, You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. That means every time I say, oh my God, sorry, Lord, please forgive me. I'm using this for illustration purposes uh, um, or, or anything like that. The Lord hears and he will not hold me guiltless. Someday I'm going to stand before him and he's going to say, he's probably going to show me every single time I have used his name in vain and I will be judged for it. I will be held accountable for it. And so will you because it's in the Bible. So it's it's the same rules for all of us who believe and don't believe no matter what. So again, if you are not talking to God, about God, or Jesus, you are using his name pointlessly, in vain, not directly to him. Now, when I first 
realized this, I went, oh, wow. And I was reading the book of Proverbs every day, and I read Proverbs 9, 10, and that says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One understanding. And I realized I needed to have a healthy respect and fear of God who created everything. If he decided to snuff my life out, he could. So I needed to be aware of of how I represented him, how I spoke to him, how I came to him, and, and how I portrayed him to others and the world around me. So I really realized, wow, I, I need to have more respect for my creator and my heavenly father. Um, now, our society does not hold anything sacred anymore. We don't have respect. People, kids call adults by their first names and um, nobody really respects anyone's property anymore. You can see that by the riots that we've been having or just, um, you know, kids go into other people's houses and they're not taught to not jump on the furniture because, you know, they're not paying for it. They don't have to clean it up. Just stuff like that. And and we've gotten more and more away from having a respect for others, a respect for ourselves, but most of all, a respect and fear of God. And I was thinking one day, about how uh, Jews, practicing Jews, Orthodox Jews, have such a healthy respect and fear for God that they will not even speak his name out of reverence because they are aware of the fact that we as humans are so sinful and filthy in our sin that speaking the name of God who is so perfect and holy is just they just don't do it because they have that reverence, that respect, and that fear for God. Now, I cannot tell you how many Christians, pastors, servants in the church, that I have heard say OMG over the last few years. And it grieves my spirit every time. If we as Christians who believe in the real Messiah, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, if we break the third commandment all day, every day, what does it say about us? Jews don't even believe in the Son of God and and the real Messiah. Yet they know to have the reverence to not speak his name. Yet here we are using the Lord's name in vain all day long. And we profess to to believe and love and revere God and Jesus. What does that say about us, you guys? But it's so easy to fall into because it's in our movies it's in our sh- television shows. It's in our music. Satan has flooded the world with this phrase on purpose. And I'll get to that point in just a moment. Now, Jesus is not a cuss word. You hear Jesus Christ in lots of movies, rated R movies, PG-13 movies. I heard, um, I heard it in a children's movie that was rated pg just a couple days ago, and I was so grieved by that. Um, If we are hearing it all the time, it becomes commonplace and it becomes normalized, and sin has greatly become normalized in our world today because of media, because of all of the things that we pump into our homes through the internet, through the television, through the radio waves. And when we're Bombarded with things all the time, we grow callous to it. So we don't even notice it. What's a callous? It's a it's a blister on our hands, right? It's thick skin. And we we have developed such a thick skin, a callousness over our heart, which the Bible talks about, 
to the sins of the world that we don't even notice them anymore. But if you went to church and you sat down and you were ready for your pastor to give a message and then all of a sudden the the big screen comes down and it's like a, a Quentin Tarantino movie where every other word is M F and G D and oh my God and um and using Jesus in the place of a cuss word. I think every every true believer, everyone who really does love the Lord in that congregation would start squirming in their seat. Or some people might even stand up and say, Turn that off. This is the temple of God. This is his church. This is his holy place for his people to come. Well, don't you know that we are the temples of God as well? 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Do you not know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? So it's not just the church that shouldn't have these things, the physical church that shouldn't have these things entering them physically, but also we as Christians, as God's holy temple and dwelling place we should not be allowing these things in our eyes ears mind heart and soul everything that we allow in comes right back out so if you're hearing omg and jc and gd and mf all day long of course it's going to come back out out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks what does your heart say? Is your heart using the Lord's name in vain? Jesus. And the words of Jesus are so important because they are, they are the words of God. And the Bible is the word of God. But Jesus came down to earth to give us very clear instruction. And so Matthew 12, verse 34 36 and 37 says, Jesus says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So whatever's going on in here, whatever's going on in here is going to come out here. If your heart is tainted with worldly things, it comes right back out. 36 and 37, Jesus says, but I tell you that everyone Everyone will have to give account on the day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. For by your words, you will be acquitted. And by your words, you will be condemned. Now, what does vain mean? Vain means empty, right? So you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses him. That's using his name in vain. And Jesus says here, on the day of judgment, everyone, me, you, pastors, our kids, our friends, our families, people who don't even know God, which is why we need to tell them about him, they will give account for every empty or vain word they have spoken. So every single time OMG has come out of your mouth, my mouth, their mouths, we'll stand before the Lord and he will say, why did you do that? I gave you my third commandment that specifically says not to. Yet you allowed the world to permeate your speech patterns and you did it anyway. And I don't want to have to go through that, especially when I have his word to guide me. And I don't want you to have to, to stand there and, and hang your head and feel so ashamed. So that's why I do this. Now, I've said before that um, my husband and I are worship leaders. And uh, that's why I wore this shirt today. It says, stick with Jesus. Stick with Jesus. It's drumsticks. And I just thought that was so cool um i'm so cheesy like that you guys i'm like the biggest nerd you don't, you don't even know but um 
it's wearing out and it's growing old. Like the Bible says about the world, it'll wear out and grow old like a garment. So I think I'm going to have to retire this one because the stick's kind of uh, falling apart here. And it makes me so sad because this was my very first Christian shirt that I thought was cute and cheesy and funny because I just I love like dad joke humor about you know Christian stuff so I just I love this but my favorite worship song is Revelation song and the um it because well I'll, I'll read you the verse Revelation 4 8 says each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under his wings. Day and night, they never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And I could speak on that verse all day long, but what I want you guys to take away from this is this. Holy, the word holy, is a sacred word. It is the word that the angels sing to God. These creatures that were created for worship sing to God 24-7 from the beginning of time until forevermore. And we have taken this word in our society, in our movies, in our media, in our music. And we have paired it with foul words. Words that mean refuse, unclean, dirty. We don't have um, any words in our language that can express how perfect and pure and good and just and powerful God is except for the word holy. So what does it say when we take that one word that God has that means purity and we pair it with a four or five letter word, holy bleep. There's nothing holy about anything here on earth except the word of God. I can only imagine how it grieves the Lord to hear people, especially his children, say, holy C-R-A-P, or any, anything, anything, because holy is, is an uncomparable, good, pure thing. And we pair it with these things that are just the opposite. And that's what Satan wants. Satan wants us to use Jesus and holy in place of cuss words because if he can get us to use sacred words in a foul way, he is getting Christians to desecrate, verbally desecrate, what God, who God is, his name, his holy name. So please stop saying OMG. Stop saying holy blank. I mean, you could say, I say Holy Swiss cheese, but that's H-O-L-E-Y, and Swiss cheese has holes in it. So, um, you know, that's, that's okay. But 
you know, the Christian walk also requires, you hear, you hear talk the talk. Well, you can say I'm a Christian, but then, you know, what else comes out of your mouth? And if you are walking the Christian walk and you are continually moving forward and growing closer to the Lord, then you walk the talk and you talk the walk. You see? So, this is a call for my brothers and sisters in your households and churches to please stop using the Lord's name in vain. Stop pairing the word holy with things that mean unclean and foul. Stop breaking the third commandment because God himself says he will not hold you guiltless for misusing his name. Save yourself some judgment. Save others some judgment and shame. And, and take this to heart and then be changed. I am so grateful that the Lord opened my eyes and has opened my mouth and has shown me these things. Because I used to have the most disgusting language come out of my mouth before I met Jesus Christ and before he cleansed me. And the more you read your Bible, the more you seek God, and the more you cleanse yourself from the things that you should not be doing, the more the Lord can and will use you. He can always use you, but you'll be a lot more useful. So um, today, my song for you is Larry Norman again, but it is called um, A Song Won't Stop the World. And it's about how he has his songs and he tries to give a message through each one. And no matter what, his song's not going to stop the whole world from doing the things that they're doing and running away from the Lord. But the person listening to this song might stop. And so I thought that was fitting today because I do White Hot Glory because, you know, I, I don't know who this will reach, but it might reach one person and they'll stop doing the things they shouldn't be doing. And then maybe they'll tell somebody else and they'll stop doing things against God. And who knows? Who knows? The Lord can do whatever he wants with whatever he wants, and he can grow things if he so desires. So I, I do this for that one, just like the Lord goes after that one sheep. And gosh, when he went after me, he just, he, he, he sure got me. And I'm so, so grateful. And so I, uh, that's why I do this. And I'm not really a crier, but when I think about what Jesus did for me and how he completely cleansed, cleansed me from some very wicked, awful, gross things, I'm just so grateful. And I want you to know what that feels like and what it looks like and what it sounds like. And so um, anyway, here's Lori Norman, A Song Won't Stop the World. This world's in trouble You know it's true But who has the answers To help us get through We look to our leaders They politely yawn The press gives coverage Stop the world going round Cause the song can't stop 
might stop the world, but it might stop just close us in a word of prayer. Father, you are holy. All honor and praise is due your name. I cannot even begin to praise you enough for the goodness you have shown me, the kindness that you have shown me, the, the glory that is due your name just for opening my eyes. And Lord, I, I pray that, I ask in Jesus' name that you do that for anybody who watches this, Lord. Start to show them, show them what the enemy is doing and show them how to combat it in their life and help their lights to shine so bright that it just catches on to someone else so that your light and your hope is shown in this dark world that we live in that gets obsessively darker I pray that people will stop using your name in vain that they will stop listening to things that do that, Lord. Because you deserve better than that. You died for us so that we wouldn't do those things, so that we wouldn't participate in that kind of stuff. So, Father, I pray that you'll just do a new work in anybody watching this, Lord, that they will begin to want to be sanctified through and through, all for you. I praise you, Lord. I thank you for the internet and for the webcam and the microphone and, and the platform to do this, Lord. I pray that you are glorified through it and that you will have your way in my life and that you will continue to bring to mind and heart and soul what you want me to say to your people for your glory, for their their souls, Lord, for the expansion of your kingdom. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. See you next time, guys.